Nope. Would you look at this view? Isn't it something, Sammy? Sam peeked out the window behind his mother who stood, arms wide open on the balcony of their hotel. He wasn't impressed. At the ripe age of 14, the last thing he wanted to do with his precious summer break was to spend it with his parents and little sister, even if they were staying in one of the highest rated hotels in Puerto Vallarta. They even had been upgraded to a suite, which meant he and his sister would have their own room, separate from their parents. Yeah, it's nice, replied Sam half-heartedly, flipping to a new channel on the TV before adding, Can we just go to the pool already? We told you, Sam, we're not going to the pool today. We're heading into town, answered his mother, coming inside and shutting the sliding glass door behind her. Sam groaned in protest, but he knew it was in vain. Their annual family vacation meant spending quality time together, which often meant a lot of boring activities picked out by his mother and father. Shopping at the local markets had been something Sam was used to by then, but that didn't mean he hated them any less. But everyone else loved it. Mom got great deals on unique jewelry, Dad got to test out his haggling skills, and his little sister Melissa always came back with at least a few new toys or stuffed animals. She was only nine, so to her the magic of these trips hadn't faded yet. Sam stared out of the window of his cab, taking in the scenes of the rustic city. The streets of Mexico were paved with poverty, and it seemed the only people he saw not struggling were fellow tourists. It was not long until the cab passed beneath the giant handwritten sign. The letters stood in all caps, big and bold against the weathered wood grain, and read, Bucerias. Hours passed, and the four travelers began to wrap up their final purchases. The Buceria area was a sight to see. To Sam's surprise, the people all seemed genuinely happy. The men sat and sipped on their cheap beer while the women played with their babies. Children laughed and chased each other over the cobblestone roads. The elderly, still dressed in their Sunday best, rocked back and forth in their hand-built chairs, running their shops. Because it was Sunday, the shops were closing earlier than normal. Sam and his family were crossing through a brightly colored alleyway on their way back to the main road, when his mother suddenly stopped. One last jewelry store had remained open, and there was a vibrant, beautiful necklace that caught her eye. She had to have it, and told Sam and Melissa to wait outside the shop. Sam let out yet another groan to express his disapproval. He had been there long enough, and his patience had worn thin. Give your teenage angst a rest, Sam. It will just be a minute. Here's some money. Go buy some candy or something for you and your sister, said Sam's mother, as she shoved a handful of pesos in his palm. Sam was pissed, but the thought of satisfying his sweet tooth calmed him down just a bit. He took Melissa by the hand and headed down the alley to the only other shop that was open. As they walked, they noticed the alley had been painted with a series of murals. Images of animals, landscapes, and passionate lovers adorned the age walls. Among the illustrations was an image of a small girl, with the words written in black above her head that read, El Beso de la Paloma. The eyes of the girl gazed into Sam's. He stood in front of it, scanning every inch. The girl was in a formal white dress, with her hair pulled back and tied in a bun. In her hands was a book and a candle. Her head had a warm aura around it, as if it were being illuminated or glowing. Lastly, a single dove can be seen. With its wings spread wide open, the dove seemed to be diving into the girl as she simply stood there, emotionless. At the foot of the painting was a collection of trinkets, food, and clothing. I wonder what it means, pondered Melissa as she also gazed at the cryptic mural. Her words awoke Sam from his trance, and he shook it off, continuing towards the shop. Using the money he was given, he bought two big chocolate bars for him and his sister. The owner of the shop was an elderly lady who pleasantly smiled at the sight of the two young travelers. ¿Eso es tu oferta? asked the women, handing Sam the candy. Sam stared back at the woman, puzzled. Um, sorry ma'am, I don't understand, replied Sam as he handed one of the candy bars to Melissa. The woman adjusted herself in her chair. The candy. Are you going to offer it to the girl? What girl? You mean my sister? She already has hers. This one is mine, answered Sam with an obvious tone of confusion. No, chico, laughed the woman. Not your sister. Her. She tossed up her wrinkled hand 
and pointed toward the mural of the young girl they had passed. It is Sunday. You must leave an offering. Sam stared at her. Crazy old woman, thought Sam, as he was getting ready to turn around and leave. Before he could, Melissa chimed in. With her little voice, she asked the woman, Why? What happens on Sunday? The woman laughed and wagged her finger at the two siblings. First time in La Busarias? Sam and Melissa slightly nodded their heads, not sure if they should leave. Before they could, the woman rose from her chair and walked towards them. That is El Beso de la Paloma, Kiss of the Dove. The girl you see was an orphan. She lived in a church that used to be here in La Busarias. What happened to her? asked Melissa, filled with curiosity. She lived in the church for years, and while they gave her food and a warm bed, she never once received any gifts. The church did not have enough money. But for her 10th birthday, the father decided he would surprise her with some small toys and candy. The woman changed her focus from the mural to Sam and Melissa before continuing. The night of her birthday, the town was attacked by a group of banditos. They trapped the father and his orphans inside and lit the church on fire. Everyone inside the building died. By now, Melissa was giving the shopkeeper her full attention, listening intently, and asked, Did they ever catch the bandits? The woman's tone lightened up in response to the sweet little girl. Even better, chica. A few days later, the bandits were all found dead. Their skin was black and burned. The man who found their bodies said the trees were filled with doves. The doves flew away when the man came. The people of the town believe it was the spirit of the girl who found and killed the men. That mural was painted for her. And every Sunday, those who visit La Busarias must leave her a gift. Sam had had enough. Oh yeah? And what happens if we don't? Does her spirit come and burn us up? He mocked as he waved his hand sarcastically. He grabbed Melissa's hand and began to pull her back to their parents, who were wrapping up their negotiations. The woman simply smiled and watched Sam as he walked away. Before they were out of sight, she yelled. Careful, Nino. She's seen you now, and she won't forget. After struggling to break free, Melissa managed to slip from her brother's forceful grip. Let go, she shouted as she yanked her wrist away. I'm leaving her my candy. Don't be stupid, Melissa. It's not real, barked Sam as he tried to pull her again. Melissa screamed at him to stop, causing people to stare at their direction. Fine, do whatever the hell you want, idiot. Melissa walked over to the mural and placed her candy beside the other collection of items. She gave one last look to the mural before smiling and running past Sam back to their mother. Sam was heated. He couldn't understand how anyone could believe such a ridiculous urban legend. He walked back to the mural and gave it another scan. Did the little girl get burned up? Not exactly the birthday party you had in mind, huh? Laughed Sam. Maybe this will put out the fire? Sam breathed in deep before hawking a large wad of spit onto the mural. He looked down at the cache of offerings at his feet. Well, if she's not going to eat it, I definitely am. Sam crouched down and picked up the candy bar that Melissa had left. After pocketing the treat, he ran back to his family and the four began heading back to the hotel. The ride back seemed to take even longer. Dusk had set in, and the dull streetlights radiated among the broken roads. Sam was sitting in the back seat with his now sleeping sister and mother, while his father sat in front practicing his broken Spanish with the cab driver. He rested his head against the window and continued gazing around. There was a lot of wildlife inhabiting the streets. Dogs, cats, rodents, and birds dwelling among the people seemed to be a normal thing. The birds, there sure were a lot of them. Sam began to count them as they moved along. So many white birds, more than he'd seen earlier that day. What were they? Seagulls? Pigeons? Dogs! Sam jumped in surprise. His dad was leaning over and speaking with the cab driver. How you say many doves, he asked, pointing to the creatures that seemed to be surrounding the vehicle. The driver was even looking at them. This was clearly not normal. It was like that all the way back to the hotel. The birds kept their distance, but slowly closed the gap between them and Sam as he walked with his family back to their hotel room. He had never been so happy to be back. Immediately, he burst into his room, 
ready to shower and end the day when he noticed his mother had left the curtains open to their patio window. Sam's eyes widened in disbelief and fear when he looked out of it. Perched up along the wall of the patio were several large white doves. They simply stood there, not moving a muscle, gazing at him. Sam's fear was quickly replaced with anger as he threw open the patio door and leapt outside, waving his arms frantically to drive away his weight tormentors. Sam watched them fly away into the night. He walked back inside and shut the patio door, locking it, and drew the curtains closed. Satisfied with his work, he decided it was time to call it a night. As Sam slept, he was plagued with nightmares. Visions of small children dying violently in large flames, begging for his help, as he stood idly and watched them wither away. No matter how hard he tried to move his body, he could only stand there, eyes glued to the horrific scene. The whole time he watched, doves gathered around him. They stared, they judged, they condemned. A loud noise woke Sam up from his nightmare. Unaware of the sound, Sam began to breathe, letting his senses return to him. He looked around the room, never feeling so much relief. He looked to his sister, who slept soundly in her bed. With one last sigh, Sam laid his head back on his pillow and shut his eyes. He was about to drift back into unconsciousness when he heard another loud tap. Sam shot back up and looked to the direction of the sound. It had come from the patio window. Eyes wide and body frozen still, Sam continued to watch the window. Another loud tap blasted from the window, but this time Sam also heard the rustling of feathers. He sighed in both relief and frustration. I am going to kill these damn birds, mumbled Sam as he dragged himself out of bed. He approached the window but stopped when he noticed something behind the curtain. He noticed a subtle light being radiated. It was too dim and hovering too low to be the patio light. Sam stood there for a minute, not sure what to do. Another loud tap, more forceful than the others, shook him from his paralysis. The tapping turned into knocking, and the knocking into banging until it sounded like there was a group of intruders attempting to break the glass from the outside. Sam was frozen solid in fear. The banging was so loud, he was sure his parents would barge in any second to investigate, but no matter how long he waited, they didn't come. In his confusion, he failed to notice that Melissa had crawled out of bed until she walked past him, heading towards the window. Melissa, what the hell are you doing? Get away from there, demanded Sam, whispering as loud as he can. She did not even acknowledge his words. Her eyes were fixed upon the window as she continued to take small steps toward it. When she had finally reached the patio door, Melissa reached up and grabbed one end of the curtains. As soon as she did, the tapping immediately ceased. Sam watched from a distance, not sure what to do. Then Melissa did it. She threw open the curtains, exposing the patio. Sam's eyes shot open and his body tensed up with so much fear that he thought he would vomit. Standing there, surrounded by doves, was the girl from the painting. She hovered slightly above the ground, carrying the same candle from the mural. Though her eyes were pure black, Sam knew she was looking directly at him through the glass. Melissa! Get away from the window, Sam begged as he gestured for his sister to come to him. Melissa was still in her hypnotic state. She released the curtains and turned her attention to the handle of the sliding door, grabbing and unlocking it. Melissa, please, just stop, whimpered Sam, backing away from the phantom girl. It was no use. With a single motion, Melissa opened up the door. Immediately, the flock of doves flew into the room and began attacking Sam. They pecked him from every direction, all over his face and body. Sam ran to the bedroom door and pulled at the handle. It wouldn't budge. He banged on the door as hard as he can, screaming for his parents to come and save him. But no help came. Bloodied and sore from the ferocious pecking, Sam desperately ran to his bed and dove under the covers, wrapping himself in a thick comforter. He felt the birds trying to attack him through the cloth, but he was relieved when he realized they couldn't actually hurt him. One by one, the doves gave up, and he heard as they flew out of the still open patio door. Sam continued to lie there in his protective cocoon. When he no longer felt or heard any doves for several minutes, he slowly peeked toward the window from under the blanket. The birds were gone, and more importantly, she was gone. The ghost girl had disappeared. Melissa had gone onto the patio and was staring over the edge, apparently still under her spell. She's not in danger. 
A chilling voice spoke to Sam from the other side of his bed. Sam's stomach dropped in terror. He whipped around only to be face to face with the girl. She stood there, only a few feet away, staring past his eyes and into his soul. But you, you will be punished. You will feel the pain I felt. The pain we all felt. Sam felt a finger rub against his back. One finger turned to several until he was being pinned down by a group of small hands. He looked at what was holding him down and could not believe his eyes. Beside his bed stood a group of children, all with horrible burns across their body. Many were missing hair. Another had his teeth completely exposed. Another, his organs. They all held Sam down, making sure his struggles to break free would be futile. Screams filled the room. Screams of the children in agony. The same screams from his nightmare. He felt the bed move and turned his head towards the girl. She began crawling into bed with him. Her body began to transform. She eased towards Sam's vulnerable body, slowly becoming like her friends. Her skin began to char and flake away while her hair disappeared into smoke. By the time she was close enough to lay a hand on her target, her body was desecrated. She wrapped her scorched limbs around the boy before giving him a single kiss on the cheek. Sam felt an excruciating pain at the touch of her skin, like being seared over a blazing grill. Before he could scream, one of the children held his mouth shut. She held him tight as he struggled. With his skin being boiled in her scalding embrace, Sam eventually blacked out. The next morning, Sam's mother and father found their son laying in his bed. His skin was incinerated with third degree burns that covered him from head to toe. All the hair was burnt off his feeble body. They found Melissa in a ball on the patio, bawling and inconsolable. When the paramedics came, Sam still had his eyes wide open, continuing to mumble a single phrase. La Paloma, La Paloma. Why does he keep saying that? His mother wept as she desperately searched for answers. What the hell does that mean? The paramedics looked at each other with a look of unease. Senora, you guys didn't happen to visit La Buceria yesterday, did you? <laughs>